Hi there, welcome, welcome my friend, welcome to Home Keepers. Glad to be with you today. It's gonna to be a wonderful program and I hope things are going really wonderful for you and your home and your family. And um, isn't it wonderful that no matter what we're going through as a nation that the uh, Bible says, fear not, it says that all the time, fear not, fear not. And I think we need to be reminded of that. So I want to remind you of it today. I have a guest who was so great on a few weeks ago. His name is Ken Williams. I asked him to stay over and talk a little bit more. So I'll show you that conversation we had. Uh, one of the greatest I've ever heard on homosexuality and the fact that the Lord can bring you out of it and give you a wonderful, wonderful normal life. And uh, I'm anxious for you to hear that. And then uh, when I get over there with Stephanie, we'll talk a little bit about what we do in the morning because Stephanie and I, as far as I can tell, are the first people here at this office. It's a great, great big building uh, each morning. And it's sometimes it's a little before seven that we're here. And um, I've watched her make her breakfast uh, all these years. And I think I said, I think it'd be a good idea if you'd show our viewers the breakfast you fix after you get here because all I do is have my tea and healthy cookies. So we'll demonstrate that for you. But before I join her, this is the greatest offer you've ever had. So perk up, okay, listen, watch. You know the wonderful books that we offer by uh, Catherine Zoller and it's a whole book of the Bible and they are in rhyme and also wonderfully, beautifully illustrated. We were going through the closet and said, we want to kind of clean it out. And this is a one-time offer only. You have to get it uh, on this program or you don't get it. Two of her books from the Old Testament, Exodus and Leviticus, it's buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. That includes your shipping and handling. Now, you have not heard of a bargain like this for a long, long time. We're only making it for today. So... Um, either write to the number or the address on the screen, box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758, or call us at 1-800-229-0059 and we'll get them out to you. And as long as they last, we will send them out. But you're only gonna hear about it one time, maybe the best bargain all year long. Do you agree, Stephanie? I'm waiting for you to say, but wait, there's more. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's not. That's it. Buy one, no, get one free. No, no. Now, we do have this relationship early mm -hmm, in the morning, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, fixing my tea, and she's doing this. Yes. And I just, just, just kind of dawned on me. It's quite creative, and you might want to know about it, so... This go for is it. One, listen, this is one of those recipes that can go a million different directions. And it's a great recipe if you have a little bit of leftovers, mm -hmm. if you have a little lunch meat, not enough for a sandwich, but mm -hmm. you don't want to throw it away. Mm -hmm. Vegetables from dinner, mm -hmm. cheese, if you have a little bit, just whatever. You can just put whatever mm -hmm. you want to in this. So I'm using my son made summer sausage from one of the hogs that we got this year. That's so amazing. We ought to have him on the show to show us how to make sausage. Yeah, so it has jalapeno and cheese in it. So I just saute that up. I take a couple and just warm it up really. Now you everything know? you mentioned goes into these scrambled eggs, right? Yeah, I mean, or you today, I mean, usually it's very simple. I try to do it fast so I'm mm -hmm. not wasting time. I just keep it really simple. You could do onions, you could do vegetables, you could do cheeses, you could do meats, you can do all the things. And, uh, but this one's really simple. You can tell it's very hearty. Well, I try to do protein in the morning because I try to get full because I get so tired of being hungry all the time. It's so <laughs> annoying. So two eggs. Is there something called an appetite suppressant? Really? Isn't that some there, kind of a drug? There is, but I don't want to take drugs. No, and a little bit you, salt. you never know what other side effects it'll bring along. Right, right. Because there was something years and years ago that... I know people were taking and it messed with their lungs long mm -hmm. term, so yep. I don't want to do that. You want so I have a tortilla. Mm -hmm. I always use low carb. I usually just put a little bit, I mean, it's, this is so simple. It's kind of silly. Well, I just put a little bit of mayonnaise and I put a little bit of hot sauce because I like a kick to everything. Yeah, I don't do hot sauce. Yeah, just, and this is really, really hot, hot sauce <laughs> I've learned. So like, we're just... I what, usually, what kind is it? Because they might want to Louisiana, buy. the perfect hot sauce. Hot. I have a feeling I won't taste this. No, uh, but I had gotten some before and I could slather this with the hot sauce and it was okay. I mm -hmm. slathered the first one that I did with that sauce 
and I regretted it. You know, I think a lot of husbands would like this breakfast. Yes, I just wanted something a little more than um, scrambled eggs and meat, and then I just love tortillas. And so the low carb, uh, is that maybe even a little better than bread? For uh, me it is, because carb. I need low, because carbs like me, mm -hmm. they go in and they don't go away, they stay. Mm -hmm. Come to stay. So I try to go low carb, I try to do protein, mm -hmm. and then I'll put it in, and then, not done yet, I'm going to turn this up a little bit, because mm -hmm. then I toast it, just to add a little crunch to it. Uh -huh. On each side. I'm not sure I ever watched you do that. Yeah, I like, a, I'm just, I'm a texture eater. Mm -hmm. So I like that little bit of crunch. So a little browning on each side. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that easy, but it's perfect for leftovers. I'm telling, I mean, that's what I, I started with. I think I had some meat or something left over from a dinner. And well, I was like, I don't. keep you past noon. It's well, and I don't, not me. <laughs> I'm always hungry. Always. It's ridiculous. My boss can sit here all day, never have a bite of food and not mention it. And from breakfast to lunch, I'm like, I'm so hungry. I'm starving. And I'm not starving. I don't know what my problem mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. I'm always well, hungry. do you think counseling would help? No. I think so, will, just a little willpower. You know, actually, I probably went back to my office before you toasted it. I'm not sure I've ever seen you toast it, I, but yeah, I can I see what a difference that would make. Yeah. And I'm, I don't want to sit here and bore you I guys with the I think your husbands would like this. Process, so let's do this. And you know, just something different once in a while is yes, not it, bad. Yes, and it's just, I don't know, it's just simple. Mm -hmm. It fills me up for a while. <laughs> How long? It uses a lot of leftovers. Mm -hmm. Look and at there that. It is. I that's think that's simple. awesome. Yes. yes. A I, super yes. recipe for leftovers. I hate throwing food away. I think I that wasting. would be good in the evening when I go home. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, uh, the, I don't know what we call it, Stephanie's Breakfast. And if you want it, it's absolutely free. And the information is coming up on your screen and you choose the way you would like to reserve it. Uh, serve it or receive. Receive it. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> Don't ever leave me, please. <laughs> and after that, they're going to see an interview I made with Ken Williams. And um, as we sat down to talk, I asked him to just quickly kind of repeat his own personal testimony before we go on into the way you can minister to people who have the same kind of troubles and problems he did. So stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Can you give us a thumbnail mm -hmm. um, story, your story? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. quickly, and then we'll get into mm -hmm. a little bit more of the hows, whys, wherefores of how we can help people in a gay lifestyle. Sure. Yeah, raised in church and then discovered same-sex attraction at age 13 or 14, was not attracted sexually to the females. What do I do with that? You know, I was, ended up being uh, touched by some other males uh, sexually. The guilt and shame from that, immense, then suicidal. Um, but then finally opening up and telling my pastor and my parents, they, then everything started to shift, got counseling, uh, then met God personally, like as, as healer, as someone who was present to be in my life and help me. And after walking with him in a great faith community for several years, developed some um, opposite sex attraction such that I fell in love with this girl. We've been married for 15 years and have four children. And, um, that's good. You did that in <laughs> less than two minutes. Um, you, your wife and you are both what you call a life coach? Yes. Uh -huh. we, we both Describe do. that a little bit. I, we have that term, and I'm not sure I've ever had a description. Yeah, I mean, I guess it means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. In our case, it means, okay, let me help, let me understand what your goals are that you're working toward in life, what's important to you, where are you trying to leave from and head to. And then we are in prayer ministry, really, helping say, okay, well, let's ask the Lord about this. You know, let's see, oh, was there something, is there a reason that you have the feelings that you have or the beliefs that you have even? Mm -hmm. Did something happen in your childhood, things like that? And then we, we pray with them and uh, 
and God really help does mm -hmm. the work, really. Uh, you also have a, a BS in um, financial. Marketing and finance, yeah. You've covered a lot of territory, <laughs> and you're still pretty young, actually. Oh, man. Um, I asked Ken to stay over just to address this subject, not so personally, but what mm -hmm. you've uh, learned through your own life and, and uh, ministry as well. I believe doing this program and uh, watching America change, because yeah. I have nine great grandchildren, so I've oh been around goodness. a long time. I love it. And um, I remember a little bit of the Second World War and some of this, those things. But we live in a wicked nation, very mm -hmm. wicked. It is not Christian anymore. And George Barna has proven that. He's mm -hmm. our Christian statistician. Right. And when 50 per, less than 50% of people go to church or are church members, it's not Christian nation anymore. And so uh, homosexuality has been absolutely glamorized. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have drag queens mm -hmm. reading to yeah. toddlers in a library. It's wicked. So this is what we're going against, but the power of God is greater. Right. Uh, but you can give us an inside look of some of the promotions. And most of all, I'd like you to tell us how someone, and there are a lot of Christians like this, mm -hmm. they have a gay son or a gay daughter. Right. And uh, if I remember your testimony right, there was a great breakthrough when you went to your parents. Mm -hmm. It was a breakthrough for everybody in the family. There was. It changed our whole family. Yeah. Because we realized, okay, we can handle hard things together. We can come together with each other and there is nothing that makes us uh, disqualified from God's love or from the love from each other. And so if we can, you know, if, if I can find a safe place to actually say, this is actually where I am. This is where, what I believe. This is what I feel. Then I invite the love of God to flow through those people, and in this case, my parents, to say, well, you know what? We're with you in this. We're going to mm -hmm. walk with you through is this. Is that the way they responded? It is. They cried with me for two hours. How did your dad? Yeah. Because we were talking before the show, and we yeah. agreed on one thing. We just met, but we agreed that the biggest problem in the nation is fatherlessness. Yeah, I would have said that if you hadn't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so that would be my curiosity is you and your dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, gosh, this happens to a lot of families where, you know, the heart's father, I think, is toward the son. Um, but something happens and you're not quite jiving with each other or a lot of things can happen. Mm -hmm. Right. So I started being mocked on the playground, you know, as an elementary school student. And it was I was mocked by the girls. I was mocked by the boys because I wasn't big and strong as they were or you know, I was a little different or I wanted to be, be doing brainy stuff or talking deeply or something and they didn't want to do that. So that was wounding. And then some pornography that, that I got exposed to, that affected my view of males. So you put all that together in my little self back then and being closer to a, a male authority figure wasn't what was appealing. Mm -hmm. I would rather talk to my mom who felt like she was more emotive and could connect better. You know, I didn't want to go outside and do the outdoor stuff my dad wanted to do. I want, I was allergic to outside and it was too threatening to, you know, so those things caused me to kind of not receive the love he had for me. How, how talking of, of fatherlessness, um, my heart goes out to the American male, I'll be honest. Yeah. I, I'm not, I don't think it's that way all over the world myself. Mm. I think the American male is almost abused in some ways. Yes, well, we've been canceled. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, you said it, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so on top of that, when God mm -hmm. said, you're the leader. Yeah. And uh, the woman's movement said, oh no, you're not. Right. And uh, just a lot of forces in the United States that we don't have time to go into. So that's why I'm so curious about mm -hmm. how did your dad respond? Mm -hmm. Did they know? Mm -hmm. they, they, did, did I they, mean, I think they suspected because just, as yeah. I was 17 when we had this talk and mm -hmm. my dad had had a com one conversation with me before saying, do you like girls? You know, and, and I, I mean, I'm like, so, oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting it. Then I'm like, well, sure, because in some senses I do, right? <laughs> um, so I knew he, he, was, he was concerned whether I was struggling or not, but you know, he didn't want to also, it's also a mistake to call your kid out on the carpet and suggest that, well, I know more about your identity than you do, you know. So, okay, that's the next thing. Yeah. Uh, parents that are watching, 
-hmm. How do you do it? It's got to be gentle. Mm -hmm. It's got to be kind. Mm -hmm. It's got to be spirit filled with love. You don't right. just point your finger at your child and say you're you're a pervert. No. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the first thing that we do. It, so if a parent is wondering, is there a challenge here? Then I think leaning in is the first thing. So we're not going to even try to talk about the issue yet. We're going to make sure that uh, am I connecting heart to heart as deeply as I can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, more eye contact. I mean, just some practical things. More eye contact. More um, really interviewing them to find out what they're passionate about. What they're, what's a big deal to them and taking, making time and space for those things or even maybe saying, you know what, we're so busy in life and you're with this and that and I'm busy. Um, could we prioritize more time? I just want to know you. I want to know you deeper. Like we've got to build that, that relational first. connection first so that they feel safe, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yes, and uh, we will have his website on the screen. Uh, you can get his wonderful book, The Journey Out, which uh, I certainly think you would uh, get an, a lot of good information from. Uh, but also, you can tell how well he speaks. And some of you pastors and youth leaders, you ought to bring him in uh, sometime, get a whole group, and I think he can educate you in one evening on this whole subject, which uh, you're up against a lot. Absolutely. And, and maybe mm -hmm. a youth pastor mm -hmm. has no clue mm -hmm. or pastor how to broach this subject. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, in the last five years alone, a Gallup poll has just indicated that there's a 60% rise in young people identifying as LGBT. In just five years, 60% increase. So yeah, the youth pastors, absolutely. I know you're confronting this. Well, also, um, I would say in the last six months, there's been such, mm. such a push. Mm. I mean, we've got, mm -hmm. uh, is it Batman or somebody? Superman, uh-huh. Uh, in the comics and yeah. Disney, there are the things that are- Identifying as bisexual, uh-huh. Uh, promoting it. And so the church is up against something mm -hmm. that is really big, but mm -hmm. God is stronger than the rest. Right. Um, what, you, what can you say, because you're a pastor, what can you say to a pastor or a youth leader? Mm. Um, I don't think you'd go up to someone and say, I suspect you're this, but right. they might come to you. Right. What do you say? I, the first thing I would say is we, we need to be modeling, sorry, modeling vulnerability. So if the youth pastor is willing to say some of his failures or some of the things, areas where the Lord's working in his life, right? Even mm -hmm. to give examples or to bring people in mm -hmm. to give a testimony of they were, you know, they were struggling with their identity and found a way through. Those create a safe space for people to share their own pain. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to also, as the church, we need to be talking about identity. We need to be talking about celebrating masculinity, femininity. We need to be talking about sexuality. We mm -hmm. need to be saying, here's God's original design. Like, this is the beauty of what God has created. Mm -hmm. The beauty of a family with a mom and a dad committed to each other, or, or you know, to, commit to each other in the marriage, and then to their children. We need to celebrate all that so that then when we have something to say about, here's how the Bible says not to do it, it's not, we're not leading with that. We're not just correcting people. We've cast vision for what God has done. That's a wonderful thing first. Mm -hmm. uh as I said before, I think just this year there's been a giant step forward in this to just paint the American culture with it, yes. accept it. And yes. uh, gay marriage is an absolute mm -hmm. abomination mm -hmm. against God's mm -hmm. plan for a man and a woman. And something that hurts me a lot is uh, two gay men or two gay women adopting a child. Mm -hmm. A child needs a father and a mother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. both. They, they need do. both. And, um, but this is being celebrated mm -hmm. big time in mm -hmm. our nation. We, we really need more uh, Christian uh, healthy people ad adopting because um, the sad thing is sometimes, you know, th that's not happening enough. And actually, sometimes the same-sex couples actually are apparently doing a great job. Like they're some of the ones that really are really, you know, adopting these children and, and Hey, th at least they're reaching out and wanting to provide a child, a family, but there's just no replacing God's design. No, you know, it's, it's every child needs a mom and a dad. Well, it, it appears to me, and, um, uh, I grew up with absolute Christian values and mm -hmm. they're not going to change, but, um, uh, they are really 
doing a good job of making it acceptable. Big time. And um, all you have to do is look at history and see what's happened mm -hmm. to nations mm -hmm. who who fully embrace this. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. That's um, if you look at history, it's very concerning when a culture embraces homosexuality, transgenderism. It it, it doesn't go well after that. And so, you know, I mean, God knows what works. He knows that that having male and female and committed marriage, you know, forever is the bedrock of a healthy society. Mm -hmm. So when you start chipping away at that, we, you don't know all the ramifications mm -hmm. that are going to come. Okay, you're a father now of four, mm -hmm. and with your whole background, I would think it would you'd be very much in tune with your children mm -hmm. um, in a way that your own parents were not. And I think so many things you've said about your parents, probably wonderful people and all oh, that, yeah. but typical. Yeah, totally. I mean, there there's was no, no training you, back then on here's what you look for. Yeah, there there was no um, no way you would have gone to them with until that moment mm -hmm. when I think you had some help, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, face it. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to, but it was so intimidating. Couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a hard time telling anybody, mm -hmm. you know, but I was finally my my misery caused me to. So. Well, how has uh, how do you look at your children mm -hmm. now? Um, and you watch for things, but also, mm -hmm. in a way, you're probably very, very protective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, parenting is the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like you're always trying to get a read and you, you don't know exactly teenager, how they're doing. You? Well, he just turned 13. Uh huh. So, yeah. So, God I mean, we're, <laughs> I know. I'm like, how do, how do you do this? You yeah, know, but yeah. I mean, we're just reaching out to friends and. And our parents and things, you know, saying, oh, what do you, what do you think here? Because mm -hmm. they're all unique, too. They're like, what, what works for one doesn't work for the other. So we're doing the best that we can. What would you say to parents, though, mm -hmm. in, in a, a culture that's saturated with yeah. this? Yeah. Um, you can't put it under the... No, rug. you can't. I, I think we really have to realize that, that the connection is the most important thing. The relational, like doing things together, talking about... Whatever it Everything, is, yeah. yeah, and even for the parents to show, like I mentioned, for the parents to even show some vulnerability. I'm not talking about them becoming merely a peer, you mm -hmm. know, with their children. Right. We, that's not healthy. No. But to say, you know, hey, you know, it owns some of their failures. You know, it's like, you know, so I have an anger problem, and please forgive me for the ways that that impacts you. I'm working on it, you know, and and sometimes I need, if they need help, admit it to their children so that they feel like, you know, permission to not be perfect as well. Mm -hmm. I, there was a, a pastor that I knew very well. He's in heaven today, and he was um, older. But when their children were growing up, they, he wouldn't let them go spend the night mm -hmm. at a friend's house. Yeah. What do you think of that? Uh, we are very, very careful. Because here's what can happen. You, even, even if it's a wonderful family, the, the, so my child is going to go over and stay with their friend, but there's a sibling that lives in that home, and they invite their friend over who brings over a cell phone, and, and so they all get, so you have to be very careful. We, we pray and we ask the Holy Spirit to show us what we're supposed to do mm -hmm. on every situation. And we almost never let our children spend the night with anyone. I, I'm glad you, uh, I, I, you know, like I said, my friend mm -hmm. made that uh, determination a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, also, as a grandma, I think what I would do now if mm -hmm. I, and I think one thing I'd be pretty strong about is a phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I gave a kid a phone, I'd say, it's not your phone, it's my phone. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> right. And I, I own it and I'll take it any time. Mm -hmm. But do those phones not all come already with an app that can take them to pornography and things mm -hmm. like that? Absolutely. Help mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's it's one of the biggest challenges because it's very difficult to make that that phone safe. There are some different apps and uh, technologies out there that can help, like Circle is one of them, um, and and it allows you to you know select by phone what apps you can and cannot use, things like that on there. But I'll tell you, I think because it's pretty much unavoidable that our children are they're going to at some point probably see something. Is we we tell our kids first, okay, so. There's a dangerous world out there. At some point, you may see some pictures you don't understand or that are upsetting. Maybe some people that showed too much of their bodies or something. I want you to come and tell me. If, if anything makes you feel uncomfortable or if your conscience is bothering you, you know, anything like that, I want you to, you're not going to be in trouble. We want to talk to you about it and we want to pray with you. And when we come from that place, then it's like they feel empowered instead of like they need to hide. 
And I think that's probably the best way forward. You know, we always come back to that one thing. Mm -hmm. It's that relationship with your children. You can establish mm -hmm. it the day they're born. Right. And keep the lines of communication open. And I can't believe it, but we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't uh, tell you how much I appreciate you stopping by. And anytime you're back in Florida, I know you live in California, so mm -hmm. don't, you, don't, you don't drop by here a whole lot, but uh, you're welcome on the program. Well, it's been a total yeah. honor. God bless you and yeah. your audience. Yeah. Stay there. I'll be back in a minute. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, you heard me tell Ken Williams that he's certainly welcome back here anytime. And I told him the same thing off camera. I think that that's one of the best, most informative guests we've had in a long time. Young parents need to hear it. Old parents need to hear it. Everybody needs to hear it and get your guard up against some of the evil that is just permeating this nation. Now, let me remind you again of this one time only deal. And if you're a regular viewer, you're very familiar with Catherine Zoller, one of the most talented, creative people I've ever met. And she is gradually uh, getting a lot of the books of the Bible for children. And they're in rhyme and they are wonderfully illustrated. And for this program only one time, we're offering you Leviticus and Exodus. Uh, buy one, get one free. Now, where are you going to find a deal better than that? That includes your shipping and handling. And also for your children, this is going to give them an overview of the Old Testament, which sometimes is a little difficult for children to understand, but she's made it in such a way that they could understand it. So I hope that you uh, got that information, 1-800-229-0059 to call uh, uh, with your credit card. And as I said, it'll only be offered in this program Buy one, get one free for these Rhyme and Reason series. Well, what a wonderful program to start out with Stephanie's breakfast and end up with such a great interview. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And please remember to join me next time. And also the fact that there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you, my friend. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.